Hey everyone, Brian Eckberg here. I'm chatting with Matt Pryor from EA Sports. We're talking EA Sports 2010 FIFA World Cup South Africa. Uh, taking a look at penalty kicks, brand new for this time, right? Brand new, completely rewritten. Yeah, we really want to kind of uh, emphasize the importance of penalty kicks in the World Cup scenario. Uh, obviously, the, the World Cup itself has been decided on penalty kicks in the past, so we wanted to make sure we gave them the credit they were due um, in, a, in a game. So we've completely rewritten them. A uh, few major things to note, as you're watching this, you'll see that there's an aiming icon. Now, uh, I should note that in the actual game, you won't see that. Um, we, we put a training mode in because it is so such a different mechanic than people will be used to that um, without this uh, icon, uh, you'd probably miss every single one. So I can quickly run through how these work. So as you see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a composure meter. So the uh, taking of a penalty kick, is a, there's a few stages. So initially, you try and stop the uh, composure meter in that green sweet spot. As soon as you stop that in the green sweet spot, you also start to power up the power bar. You'll see that appears above the name there. So that's your power. In addition to that, you'll also start to aim. So there's kind of a three-step process. So I'll try and put this in the top corner to illustrate it. So there's my power. I put it into the top corner and there. So there's a lot more control. Literally, you can put as much power as you want and also aim anywhere in the goal you want. There's obviously a balance. So if you try and go with lots of power, just as in the real world, you'll lose a lot of accuracy. So it's kind of this, uh, this balance in between power versus accuracy. Um, every player in the game will have a, a, a value in, a data, in the database that indicates his composure. So it'll be a different experience depending on who you're taking the kick with. Likewise, it will also vary depending on the importance of the kick. So just as in the real world, it's a lot easier to take a kick if you're 7-0 up and you're going to looking to go 8-0 up as it is to take the potentially uh, World Cup winning penalty. So that is also factored in. Also, there's a lot more control for the keeper. So Traditionally, um, if he dove to one side and the player hadn't aimed to that side, he, he'd basically just not make any other effort to save it. Now we have him, he'll kind of cycle between animations, so if he dives to the bottom corner but the, goal, but the ball goes just above him, he'll actually reach out and try and save it. So there's a lot more um, control for both the kick taker and the, and the goalkeeper. It looks like it's well worth your time to spend some time in practice mode here. Absolutely. Like I say, um, initially through playtesting this, uh, people who just got a penalty in-game without this practice mode just missed because it is such a uh, kind of radically different way to people who are used to taking penalties. So normally what you find is people just push the controller one way and just keep it there, expecting it just to the old compass point system. But there's a lot more to it. And if you do that, I can quickly show you what happens. Oh. Okay, wait, that... That one just went straight down the middle because I, I didn't have time to move it across. But if I just do that, you can see if you just point it, you'll, you'll skew it way out. So what we were finding were a lot of people were doing that, hence why we put the training thing in. But as I mentioned, a very important point in the actual gameplay, competitive gameplay, you won't have this icon indicating where, where it, uh, the ball will go. So it's a lot more difficult. This is just to kind of get you used to the system. Say we're in a game-ending situation in the finals. How will this look different? How will this behave differently? So you won't get the marker is the key difference, and then the composure would be a, the composure a green spot will be a lot smaller because it's such an important penalty kick. All right, so we've got penalty kicks. Now we've got captain your country a new mode, right? Captain your country, yeah. So it's a new mode. So I'll quickly go through the setup there. So as you can see, it's a multiplayer mode, up to four people locally. If you haven't got friends to play with, you can compete directly against the CPU. You can pick any of the qualification regions, and this mode takes place in the, the two years um, it takes to qualify for the final World Cup. It's a much bigger tournament than a lot of people realize. The bit in South Africa is just the culmination of that. So it's a very deep mode. On default settings, it's about 40 hours of gameplay or something in, the, in, in that region. So it's a, there's a lot to it. Um, and you can literally pick any of the teams in the game. There's 199 teams in the game. So we'll quickly just go through this setup. So here I would just pick my team, so we'll just go with Iraq. Very challenging if we were to win the uh, World Cup with Iraq. And the idea of the mode is that it's based around um, the pinnacle of every professional footballer's dream, as it were, and that is to take your country to the World Cup final and as captain and be the one to lift the, uh, the little gold trophy at the end of it all. So it's, it's, it's every uh, professional footballer's dream. So there's a, a number of ways you can do that. So as you can see here, you can create a new player, so you can create yourself. You can play as a real player, so uh, if you're an England fan, you can play as the Steven Gerrard and Wayne Rooney's of the world. Or as you can see from that menu item, you can also load a Virtual Pro from FIFA. Virtual Pro from FIFA was a very um, popular feature, and you can actually bring that your Virtual Pro from FIFA into this and, as I say, try and achieve the ultimate goal in football. 
So just for simplicity's sake, I'll uh, play as a real player. And again, the, the game varies depending on what kind of player you're playing as. Because you're playing as an individual, playing as a defender will be a very different experience uh, to playing as an attacker. So you can go in and complete this mode as any of the, any of the positions, but it will be a very different experience depending on which you pick. So I'll just quickly run through picking the four players who will be competing in this. Including goalkeeper? No, you can't play as goalkeeper. That's the one That's the one position you can't. So there's the real world fixtures, um, and you, you can see as we advance to this. The whole mode is kind of based around the um, the World Cup central screen. So if you if you log on to FIFA.com, you'll see the actual website looks very much like this. So obviously we work a lot hand in hand with FIFA. So we want to create a very authentic um, environment in which you play. So the idea is that you start off as a uh, low level player so here you can see we are fringe players that means we're on the periphery of being picked for the squad you'll start out in the b team and the way it works is you will play the game and you will be um, rewarded for how well you play based on the man of the match rating as you get better and better you will work your way up the ladder so you can see here from fringe to squad to qualifying to first first 11 and then ultimately to captaincy so it's all about starting small and working up and one of the interesting things about the mode is obviously the four of you are working towards the main goal which is getting your team through the qualification and ultimately to the World Cup but there's kind of a subplot in that you're also competing head-to-head -head with your friends or with a CPU to earn the captaincy so it kind of creates this interesting dynamic where you're all out for the same thing in terms of a team base but then at the same time you're competing head-to-head -head. so maybe you could put a three ball through to your friend when you're 6-0 up, but that would increase his man of the match rating, so maybe I'll just hang on to it. So it creates this kind of very interesting dynamic amongst the people that are playing, and it creates a lot of kind of interesting banter when you play with four of your friends. So it's all centered around man of match, how many man of match uh, awards you, you receive? Well, it's, it, you don't have necessarily have to get the man of the match itself. You will get a man of the match rating, so anywhere between one and 10, so it's a, it's a cumulative total of that. So you could have a great game and be man of the match, um, but then have three bad games, so a, a player who's consistently good might move above you in those tables. How do you progress in the game? So you progress in the game by getting that man of the match rating. So as you progress, you will be then picked for, you will start in the B team, then you'll become a, a fringe player, and then you'll gradually get picked for the, the full team squad, and then feature in the friendly matches, and then in the qualification matches. And then ultimately, the goal is to get picked for the World Cup, and, and, and take it from there, as it were. Once you get picked for your World Cup team, and a captain is chosen, do you have any hope of becoming a captain, or is it sort of that's the cutoff time? No, there, there, there is a chance in the actual World Cup. It's very rare in real world that they change the captain during the World Cup. So um, there is a possibility, but he, someone would have to perform very bad. So the, the, the bulk of the, the fighting for the captaincy, as it were, would take place in the qualifiers and the run-up to that. Well, captain your country and penalty kicks, new for the World Cup game 2010. The question everyone has is when's the game coming out? Uh, it will be out April 27th. Uh, thank you.